Hi, welcome to this channel on Magnetic Energy Technology Principles Applications. This video is about the Celestial Particle Transmuter. This is highly alternative information. Unless, of course, you're working in a top secret government facility that focuses on this technology, then you already know everything I'm saying and enjoy this information. It's just a repeat for you. This, <laughs> what I'm trying to do with this information is provide an alternative, some alternative explanations for how the universe functions from this magnetic etheric model point of view. How the Earth functions, how gravity functions, rotation of the planets, all these types of things. And not only that, but it's, it's, we were given so much information about this technology and about the future of humanity. And the reason we took it seriously is because so much of the information was validated to us. And now just because it was validated still doesn't mean that there's, we have a high level of skepticism about what is to come because obviously it's, it's the future and, and who knows until that actually happens. So if there is a pole shift, if there is a rise in consciousness, if electricity stops working to a large degree, and if magnetic technology comes out, comes forth, then what does the world look like? Like what will happen with this new technology and how will it change society? And, and that's really the, one of the primary focuses of these videos is to try to give people some idea of how society could change and will change with this type of technology. And hopefully that's going to give people just a small bit of hope that the future of humanity actually could be quite bright and quite amazing and mind-blowing. And it's, I know it's, it's difficult probably for a lot of people to have hope in this type of what's going on right now, but maybe there is a little bit of hope and there's a high level of orchestration around our planet right now to ensure that the future of humanity is not only preserved, but goes into this amazing direction with technology and consciousness and everything. So the celestial particle transmitter is the unit that will be modeled after in um, so many different ways because the concepts in it are what will bring about like the nuclear reactors, the magnetic nuclear reactors that I've talked about. And, and it's the foundational unit in so many ways because it powers the other units. It will be the model for charging crystals, for programming crystals in the crystal age technology. It helps with um, air travel, space travel. It will be the unit that helps bearing the energy necessary for replicating matter and for breaking down matter and for generating new forms of matter that we haven't even seen yet. And so it's it's this foundational unit. This is a nuclear device, okay? And that's one of the reasons why this technology is often suppressed or repressed because it, from the FCC point of view, this is producing fields that are against their regulations. And so that's one of the reasons why I say, please only attempt to build these units and to do anything with this technology if you are very, very guided to do so. Extremely guided from your heart space, not from an ego space, not from a mental space, because that's not a good way to approach this technology. It has to be from a loving heart space. And you better be 100% guided in my opinion if you're going to try to work with this technology because there's a lot of factors involved that are in actively engaged in suppressing it right now and so when you have neutral magnetic pulsing and you combine that with this what we can from a conventional point of view they will say neutrons are involved in this process and you are exposing certain elements to that high level of magnetic pulsing and neutron exposure, it produces radiation. Now we will call it a neutral magnetic radiation, which doesn't really fit into the conventional categories of like alpha, beta, and gamma and neutron radiation. It's not quite in any of those categories. And as they will as we are sure, I mean, not only are we sure based on what we were told, but we are sure based on the technology itself that the radiation that is produced from it is very beneficial to life. And that will be confirmed by top secret labs that have been working with this technology for decades and with exposure to humans, animals, plants, and the huge benefits that are reaped from being around this type of radiation that is produced in these units, this neutral magnetic radiation. And so we absolutely believe it is beneficial to life. Otherwise, there's absolutely no way I would be promoting this whatsoever. And so it's, it's a level of radiation that 
is produced in the functioning of these units. And what happens is the units generate signals. So like this particular unit, the celestial particle transmitter, is specifically designed to generate pulses of neutral pulses of magnetic energy and send those pulses out into the atmosphere and what happens is we are drawing from the ionosphere and we are drawing from what we call the inner rim or the ground like a conventional point of view would be like the ground circuit but it's energy within the earth and the ionosphere and we're bringing those things together inside of the unit and then creating new molecular structures with the combination of those through magnetic pulsing and through vortices and all the magnetic functionings of this type of technology. So it's very important to understand that this unit along with other these other neutral magnetic energy units they create a two-way street of energy flow between the ionosphere and the earth and back. So they not only do they bring energy to the ionosphere and they bring energy like they channel energy from the ionosphere but they also support it so ionosphere and then let's include the ozone layer in that these units will build those fields up they will restore them they will bring balance back to them they will replenish those energy fields just by their functioning alone because they're two-way streets of energy they when the energy goes in one direction it always goes in the other direction at the same time and then when we use when we convert this neutral magnetic energy and we cause another unit to function then that energy is recycled back into the system to continue this whole process of balancing the energy fields around the planet. Now that's completely different than electricity which is a one-way street. So electricity strips the ionosphere, strips the ozone layer and changes that in a redistribution process it changes that energy so that uh, it does not flow back to its source and it does not replenish it does not restore the ionosphere or the ozone layer it literally just simply strips it and strips it and then most of the time it's converted to some sort of heat or something that is not usable to to actually replenish the system the way it was so that's one of these whole fundamental concepts in this model is to always stay as neutral as possible. The etheric energy, even like Tesla used to talk about, the etheric field is neutral in nature. Now we would say not only is it neutral in nature, but it's always, it's predominantly neutral, but it's encoded with an infinite variety of other encoding that allows that energy to perform all its different functions. So in this model there are an infinite variety of neutrons or neutral magnetic structures throughout their universe. There's an infinite variety of those along with other what is from a conventional point of view called atomic parts and that would be like protons, neutrons, electrons. In this model each of those components, if you want to call them atomic components, which we don't agree with that model, but I'm using that language to help explain it. Each of those components has a, a subcomponents that go to a nearly infinitely deep level, and there's a complexity there that is not replicated across the board. So there's an infinite variety of neutrons, protons, electrons, and the substructures of those are what we call the core structures of all of those components. That is where the key is for how they move, how they move throughout the universe and how we're attracting them and how we are causing an interplay of elements like with this technology and causing that energy to move to basically what we're doing is we're taking neutral energy to create ionic energy. So you could say this is a flow of ions through the conductive use of neutrons. And so we're creating a flow of ionic energy and that's just simply like highly charged particles. But we have a neutral, a predominantly neutral charge to those ions, which gives them an incredible amount of versatility that we can then do to essentially do everything from replicating matter to producing anti-gravity to breaking down matter to all of those cool functions that this model supports. We're kind of getting into the workings of the universe and what is the true nature of matter and how is it actually composed 
composed? How does it actually form and reform? Now, one of the key, key processes to this unit and all the other units, and in this model to all life in the universe and all life like on our planet, is this consistency of energy flow under a pressure, under pressure throughout the system. If so, so the etheric flow is dynamic, okay? It's changing constantly. It's interdimensional. So it changes as it moves through dimensions. As it comes into our dimension, does its job and goes back into a higher dimension. So that, and that's all about resonance change. Its vortices are the vehicles for transporting it from higher dimensions to our dimension and then back. So we've got lots of vortices. We've got lots of changes in resonance and we've got lots of core structures like core atomic structures that dictate where the energy goes and what its function is. Now throughout that whole process there is it's all based on that attract which I talk about in almost all the videos. It's all based on attract and it's all under pressure flow and there's a timing to it. There's a sequence to it. It's at a nearly infinite velocity and there's a randomness to that process. Now what's so profound about that is if that was not consistent if that process was not consistent, first of all, we wouldn't exist. Matter wouldn't exist as we know it because it's always being sustained. Now the units would not function. These type of units that are 100% dependent on the consistency of the etheric flow and the universal energy flow, they would not function if that process wasn't 100% consistent and dependent at all times. Like we can depend on that. Now this is a weird point of view in this model when you compare it to like the conventional point of view of physics where things are interdependent, like things are independent, like there's so many things are closed systems. So like this idea that everything is an open system and that there's an energy flow through everything from a source that goes through the system and then goes back to source and it's the consistency of that flow that keeps everything going in our universe. It keeps life going. It keeps matter held together. It keeps gravity going. It keeps technology like this functioning. That idea that we are 100% dependent on a universal flow from a source of energy. Now you can call that whatever you want. People are gonna call that God, people call it source, people call it universal light, but that we are 100% dependent, our existence is dependent upon that source and upon that flow. That is a very difficult thing, I think, for scientists to swallow that that's how everything is really working, that we're 100% dependent upon that flow for our existence, and that flow is consistent, and that we should not ever engage in technology that can disrupt that flow, or interrupt that flow, or cause problems with that flow, and that type of technology would be like electricity. Uh, nuclear power. Anytime we are manipulating elements and creating radioactive elements. Now this, these units like this, they will produce a radiation, a field of radiation. There is no uranium, there's no radioactive elements, there are no manipulated elements in these units, yet they still produce radio, radioactive fields because of the neutron bombardment and the elements involved in the units the, that field, when the unit stops, all those fields always dissipate. Okay, so, and those fields are, like I said, they're not dangerous in any way that we've ever seen and heard of, and that will be obviously confirmed to the nth degree. So, this idea that we are 100% dependent on universal flow at all times, our, everything about us is, this incarnation process, and it's not even that, it's even at higher dimensions, we're still dependent upon it. So our true selves, our true nature, our energy bodies, our soul, everything, even at higher dimensions, is still 100% dependent on that flow of energy that happens at all times. That is a measurable rate, it is a random rate, but it is, it is highly measurable. And not only that, with this type of technology, not only will humanity get to the point where we measure the specific units, if you want to call it that way, the, but the specific like energy units that are coming into our solar system and into our planet that are flowing to us at all times and the 
that are keeping all life sustained at all times. We will measure it, we'll monitor it, we will filter it, and we will make sure that it's as clean and pure as possible and uncorrupted the way that humanity has terribly corrupted that flow of energy in the last hundred years or so. So, with that said, the celestial particle transmitter is the foundation of magnetic energy technology for the future, and uh, so many variations will pop up from this unit that use the same concepts that are involved in this unit. And there's so much detail on the website on this. If you have time to read it, that's great. If you feel compelled to read it and you can get through all that information, more power to you, that's great. But there are a tremendous amount of detail in there. And so it's, it's, it's something that we have to maintain hope for the future and maintain that idea that things really are being guided, that things are going to change, that things are moving in a direction that is ultimately going to be for the massive benefit for humanity and for the neighboring galaxy around us and trying to clean up our act and clean up our relationship to, the, to all the systems around us because we have been contaminating the magnetic flows between solar systems for decades now and that all needs to stop. So. <laughs> With that said, <laughs> if I'm permitted to, I will see you next time.